In these emails is where it gets even worse. It's Michael Ladola. He wrote an email on October 14th, 2014, stating, and I quote, the notion that I would be getting my drinking water from the Flint River is downright scary. In another email, which was a briefing to the governor from his departments in February 2015, says that it appears the mayor has seized on the public panic to ask the state for loan forgiveness and more money for their infrastructure improvement dismissing Mayor Walling's outcry. The briefing finishes with, once the city connects to the KWA system in 2016, this issue will fade in the rear view. In another email from Chris Kalensky of the Michigan State Troopers says, as you know, the governor can declare it any time for any reason, meaning Snyder could have declared a state of emergency much sooner than he actually did, no matter if the city did or not. All of this information brings us to the ultimate question, how could Snyder not have known? When our city council makes a vote in May of 2000, or a, a March of 2015, to get off of the Flint River, and he and the emergency manager turned it down, calling it incomprehensible, there's no way he didn't know. Much of Snyder's staff, including his chief of staff, knew very well of the catastrophe at hand, whether it was the TTHM or lead, and now Legionnaires. Is the state government truly that incompetent? Is the governor lying? Unfortunately, we don't know that. There are several simultaneous investigations being conducted by federal and state government with no conclusions as of yet. The emails released, the silenced EPA official, and the overall lack of acknowledgement among all parties in wrongdoing point to this Flint water crisis as not just a mishap, but a full-fledged cover-up. Official release of this documentary, DTV had a rare opportunity to speak to Governor Snyder about the latest on the water crisis. We were only granted a few questions, but in this exclusive interview, Snyder spoke about changes in laws, plans to speak to the public, money being used, and his thoughts on the criminal charges. I haven't heard what they are specifically, but we've been cooperating with all the investigations, and I encourage them, the investigations to take place. Mm -hmm. And do you have any fear that any of your appointed officials will be anywhere close to that? Well, again, I, I think our people have been working hard um, to address the qu questions in Flint, um, and we'll wait and see what the Attorney General has to say. Okay, and Congress members are saying that the state isn't giving enough money right now, and so do you feel as governor that you're giving enough Actually, the state's far ahead of the federal government in terms of the amount of aid for Flint. Uh, we've done $67 million so far. I've got a request in for another $165 million. That's far more than the federal government assistance that's been provided, although we want to partner well with the federal government. All of us should be working together to address the questions and problems in Flint. And your task force asked for changes in the emergency manager law. Mm -hmm. Do you support that? Well, again, that's something I'm always open to about how you can improve legislation. Overall, the emergency manager laws worked well, but you can continually improve. And I think there are some good legislative hearings that are looking at those same questions. Okay. And do you think or do you plan to meet with the people of Flint and, you know, talk to them? And I've been meeting with a lot of people in Flint. I was just in a Flint resident's home this week getting water to drink. Do you plan to do it in the public? Again, I've had public events. i there quite often for the interact Interagency Action Committee. Um, so I'm there many Fridays, most Fridays in fact, to uh, help chair that meeting. There were serious mistakes made from everyone involved in the crisis. Governor Snyder for not knowing crucial facts when his staff clearly did, the EPA for not coming in sooner, and the MDEQ for not treating the water right. But it gets worse. There is blatant disregard shown by Governor Snyder when he hired a PR firm for his staff and himself. And on top of that, he hired a team of defense attorneys being paid for with taxpayer money, $1.2 million of it. The list of disrespect toward Flint goes on. And there continues to be no concrete end in sight for Flint. It's been two years since the switch even happened and Flint's water is still not safe to drink. Only 30 lead service lines have been replaced, with more yet to be even located. The state and city have plans that will take time to enact, but the waiting game is done for the people of Flint. Things haven't changed for these families going through it every day. The EPA and Virginia Tech have evidence that the water quality is improving, but the people's trust is broken beyond repair. Health problems and lawsuits will linger as the national spotlight has begun to fade out. As the nation moves on, the people of Flint are trapped, their city damaged, and their children poisoned. And two years later, this crisis still has no solution.